Hello again everybody. This short video is about the refraction of light, measuring the focal length of a convex lens and how a refracting telescope works. So the first question to ask ourselves is what is the refraction of light? The refraction of light is the change in direction of a ray of light because it enters a different medium. So here we have our light beam whizzing along and it hits this interface here. Let's imagine that this is air and this is water. So it hits, it hits the water here and it changes speed as it enters the water and as a result of this change in speed, it changes direction. That is what refraction is. As a quick reminder, you probably know this. This here, this line here is the, nor the normal line. This angle here is the angle of incidence. And this angle here, uh, here is the angle of refraction. So a light beam changes speed and this causes a change in direction. But what causes the change in speed? The change in speed is caused because a light ray has width. It's a very, 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 very small width, but it does have width. Now, if something has width and it goes from one medium to another, it will turn. There are two examples of this given here. On the left hand side we've got our column of marching soldiers. Now they're marching along on concrete here and they've entered the swamp here. And the boundary between the concrete and the swamp is here. Now these soldiers here have entered the swamp before these soldiers here. So these soldiers here on the right hand side will have slowed down before these guys here. Now the effect of that is to turn the whole column to the right. Same goes with the toy car over here. Imagine that this is uh, tiles or lino. This is carpet. This is the right wheel. This is the left wheel. The right wheel will enter the carpet first and so will slow down before the left wheel. The effect again is the same, it will turn the toy car to the right. So here is a summary of light reflect, refraction through glass and water. On the left hand side here we've got air into glass and what we've got is where we are taking the light beam from a less dense medium to a more dense medium and what happens is the light bends towards the normal and you get a smaller angle. Now when the light emerges from the glass block and we, we're going from more dense to less dense what happens is the light bends away from the normal and the same thing happens in water, air to water, here we go we're going from less dense to more dense and we're bending towards the normal here then we're going from water to air we're going from more dense to less dense and we're bending away from the normal so how does this apply to lenses here we've got a convex lens a convex lens has a curved surface on the outside so that it makes it fatter in the middle and here we have our rays of light coming in and look what's happening. They are being refracted by the convex lens and they're moving towards one focal point here and the focal point is where the image is formed and the distance between the middle of the convex lens and the focal point is called the focal length. Now another word for 
what's happening here to the rays of light is convergence and what's happening is the light is being refracted but it's also said to be converging that is moving inwards to one central point so a convex lens converges light rays and this is called a converging lens Here are three converging lenses, A, B and C. Have a little think about the difference between the three of them for one second. That's right, you've got it. A is fatter than B and B is fatter than C. And from that we can also deduce that the focal length of a converging lens is shorter the fatter the lens is. So here's our fat lens, short focal length, going down to our skinny, len skinny lens and long focal length. Now one thing that you need to be able to do is calculate the focal length of a convex lens. This person is calculating the focal length of a convex lens and it's very easy. So the first thing you do is you set your lens up and make sure that your lens is collecting lots of light. And the second thing that you do is you hold up a piece of paper and you move your piece of paper backwards and forwards just a little bit until you focus an image on the piece of paper. And the third thing that you do is you measure the distance from the image to the middle of the lens. Done. Now I've seen an examination question on this and it asks, asks you to outline the steps that you need to take to calculate the focal length of a convex lens. And it, it's very easy as I've just described, one, two and three. So step one, get, gather lots of light. Step two, focus the image by moving the piece of paper backwards and forwards a little bit. Step three, measure the distance. The last thing that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to explain how a refracting telescope is constructed. So here's a new one, and here's an older one, and a much bigger one. And here is how... Uh, they are constructed. They're both constructed the same way despite the difference in age and the difference in size. So basically what you've got is you've got at the left hand end of the telescope you've got the objective lens which is uh, usually very large and its purpose is to collect light. The image forms here. Now the image that forms here is very small so what happens is these rays of light are allowed to continue. They go through a second lens, which is called the eyepiece lens. And what the eyepiece lens does is the eyepiece lens magnifies this image. There we go. That's how a refracting telescope works.